Hi, this is continuation for Power Electronics Lectures and we are going to continue talking about MOSFET transistors and switching MOSFET transistors. So uh, in the first part, I have just discussed the MOSFET transistor structure and how they are different and what properties they, uh, they provide us and also what uh, is the complication in uh, switching on these uh, MOSFETs and how the uh, process of charging the capacitance and how we com uh, compute the current needed for that. And we decided later that we have to use gate drivers and we have some uh, consideration we need to consider during usage of these MOSFETs because now they are more popular than other switches. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about some considerations for uh, using MOSFETs in circuits. And maybe the first one is, uh, uh, is this circuit where we have a MOSFET here and we decided to use a driver, but some manufacturers, they have problems if your driver is far away from your MOSFET because this wire here, this is a wire, okay, has some inductance and that can be seen as a small inductance like this. So if we modeled, this part here, we have inductance here, which is represented by long wire, okay? And that one, MOSFET, has an input capacitance, which is this capacitor. So this is a small sample model of how the circuit look like. So what is the problem? Okay, we have inductance and capacitance. They will resonate, okay? So for example, if we have one micro Henry, for example, for this length of wire, Okay, and we have 500 picofarad as input capacitance, so the resonant frequency will be about 7.1 megahertz. Is there any problem? Yeah, it is problem because the switching on will resonate like this. It is high frequency. This is some some good point. It is high frequency because that high frequency can be uh, attenuated by other ways. Okay, but this is one of the uh, consequences of very long distance between the drivers and also the gate of the MOSFET, and that's why some manufacturers they uh, advise and they recommend to use very short or even place your MOSFET as close as possible to the driver. Okay, 7.1 megahertz. Sometimes it's detected in the uh, some tests like electromagnetic tests, and they sometimes fail if they are very high. The other point here is you you see the oscillation here. We have some peaks, and these peaks are dangerous sometimes and might damage your MOSFET because if we are going to apply 20 volt on our gate, okay. And this is the 20 volt. That means this peak is higher than the 20 volt, maybe 30 volt. And the data sheet says that if you apply more than 20 volt, you are going to kill your MOSFET, and this oscillation will kill our MOSFET. That's why we are not happy with this kind of oscillation. The solution is to provide gate resistor like this. So that gate resistor is providing damping to these oscillations and to make it maybe smoother, close to the to the voltage once we apply it or uh, from the from the driver to the gate okay that will smooth the that that the transition but don't make this resistor very high because you will limit the current going to the gate and you will make the turn on time higher and longer and don't make it very very low to uh, make the oscillation happen okay so this is like uh, a trade-off between the oscillation and damping the oscillation and also keeping the current high to, to turn on faster. We have another solution which using a uh, ferrite bead and ferrite bead is just a small a small ferrite uh, material look like this or look like this so we have you can insert your wire inside this hole here or you can solder uh, a your ferrite bead between the gate and between the driver and what it does this ferrite bead has very low resistance in low frequencies and very high resistance in high frequencies. It's like inductance, okay? And that provides attenuation for high frequency. So we mentioned before in the previous slide that the frequency might be in megahertz. That means, yes, this will attenuate that megahertz range, um, range and make it smoother transition in the uh, turn on time and there is no peak anymore. So 
this is one also for uh, of the recommendation and we have other things that we have to consider which is this transistor this resistor this resistor is a gated discharge resistor and what it does and why it's very very important and the importance of this resistor here appears when we turn off our MOSFET when we turn off our MOSFET this MOSFET here that voltage that drain voltage it was very low and will become very high for example 400 volt here okay or a hundred volt so look at this we have capacitor there and we have another capacitor there so what will happen to this voltage it will be divided across these capacitors it's like capacitive voltage divider okay so it will be divided between that capacitor and that capacitor and if we are turning off our transistor and that high voltage appears here and divided across these capacitors that means there is a voltage will be present here and that will turn on my MOSFET back and that's the problem we have something called like false turn on uh, a MOSFET and this happen if we have this phenomena so to to um, to prevent this to happen we have to provide um, a discharge gate uh, gate resistor here and that will deplete the charge and make the current just go and just discharge very quickly sometimes even using that one it happens some spike appears here and turn on the MOSFET for a short time okay and that needs also some consideration of choosing this um, this resistor and uh, choosing it very very low makes the charge of the driver here the current coming from the driver go to this resistor not going to the MOSFET and this will make the turn on time higher and longer and making it very high makes the discharging this capacitor during the turning off takes also long time and makes false turning on of this MOSFET so that's why we have to choose it moderate and maybe the preferable values between one kilo to about uh, five kilo okay so this is the moderate range of this value and one main property for MOSFETs is the relation with temperature we have this graph where where we find um, the temperature is is increasing here okay to higher values and also we have here the RDS on the resistance of the of the of the MOSFET we are seeing here that the resistance is growing higher and higher and higher and higher is it good or bad so if we have a uh, current going through that MOSFET and that MOSFET start heating up so that resistance inside that MOSFET will increase more and more and more what does it mean that current that causes the transistor to heat up it will decrease that means it will decrease the total heat of the MOSFET and that will help the MOSFET to stabilize itself thermally okay and that's good in paralleling also the MOSFETs so that's why we uh, mentioned that the MOSFETs always have something called positive temperature coefficient do you remember the BGT they have negative temperature coefficient when you increase the temperature uh, the conductivity increase more current increase and temperature increase and going to run away thermal runaway but the MOSFET doesn't have thermal runaway there is something else we have to consider if we have voltage between the gate and source okay and why sometimes we apply high voltage between gate and source but within the limit the maximum limitation we don't apply 3 volt or 5 volt not because also the switching losses and uh, we want to decrease it no there is another thermal uh, uh, consideration we have to see here okay so this now graph is presenting for me the the graph for vgs voltage i'm applying between the gate and source and the current going through the mosfet okay so at 25 degree here the, the voltage when 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 i apply more voltage more voltage more voltage more voltage okay so more current will go through the mosfet okay so this one but if i have this curve here at 25 degree and the mosfet now start heating up at more temperature more temperature more temperature okay and this is the other curve appearing here if more temperature happen i said l more resistance will will be present so that's why the current now will drop but look at this portion here 
if I am at 25 degree, there is there is a current here value. For example, this current, okay, at 25 degree, and if the temperature increase, the current will increase. So that happens. This region here happens if I am applying lower VGS voltage, and that happen here if I'm applying higher VGS voltage. That means I should apply higher voltage, okay, and keeping my MOSFET within this region here uh, after this point, okay. Be before this point, my MOSFET uh, is a threaten and can go to thermal runaway if I keep my MOSFET uh, uh, through this region, which is uh, thermally unstable, okay. So that's why this is the benefit of uh, um, driving my MOSFET with higher VGS voltage. And when we talk about paralleling our MOSFETs, I think maybe one thing that comes to your head is we have here resistance, one gate resistance, and we can parallel our resistance like this. If one is heating up, its resistance will, will increase and makes less current inside it, and finally they will share the current between themselves. So the MOSFET is easier to connect in parallel than other uh, transistors. But there is one small problem. Do you remember the uh, capacitance here? And there is another capacitance here. And this wire between these capacitors, we can model it like this. So we have capacitor between the first, for, from the first MOSFET. We have another capacitor from the second MOSFET. And we have oscillation because of the distance and wire between them. That will make also another oscillation. And to damp this oscillation and to prevent it fr from peaking and going to higher voltage, we are proposing these damping resistors. Okay, so if we increase here another resistor and another resistor, this will damp the oscillation and make less risk uh, for these MOSFETs. Okay, so uh, in addition to this gate um, um, resistor, we have these to damp the oscillation, and we mentioned this gate. Um, uh, tri resistor, it reduces the e electromagnetic interference be because if you don't have this one, the charging of these capacitors, of this input capacitors and input capacitors will be very quick and that will make spikes that we can be detected by the testers and that makes your application fail and introducing this resistor will make it uh, pass the test and also it controls the turn on or turn off time sometimes they don't use one resistor sometimes they use two resistors to, to to control the turn on time and also the turn off time but they have to use another diode with that so i will finish the lecture up to this point and we'll continue talking about gate drivers and how they look like and what's the consideration for these uh, gate drivers in the high side and low side so see you in the coming video thank you